how can I maintain a clean and organized home when my kids contribute to the mess? This is a great topic, and as an organizer who deals with a lot of families, it can get overwhelming. Now, if you're a parent, you totally understand this. Parenthood is challenging enough as it is, and getting organized sounds easier said than done. Now, combine these two together, and it's truly a balancing act that many of us struggle with day in, day out. If you're here, it's because you want to know how to get your life and home more organized and structured where the kids are involved too, so that parent life is a little easier and you can focus on what truly matters. Hey there, I'm Diane Jimenez, owner and founder of One Tidy Place. I created this podcast because I know parents have their hands full. I know this because I have three kids of my own. Each week, we'll talk about all things organizing, teaching kids life skills, and contributing to the home, being on the same page with your partner, and raising your kids together while you tidy up, go out for a walk, or just need some real talk. I'm here for you. Thank you for tuning in. Are you ready? Let's do this. Hey there, welcome to another episode of Parenting Guide, Organizing Habits Made Easy podcast. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, this is a little bit of a different scene that you're seeing right here behind me or in general because I'm in my car. I'm in between errands and waiting for my kid to finish his class. I just dropped him off. So I said, you know what? Why not take advantage of this hour that I'm waiting here in the car to record a little video slash podcast episode to get my stuff done at the same time instead of just playing my usual games that I play on my phone. And plus, the light is great right now. So I said, you know what? I'll take advantage of that as opposed to the crazy lighting and dark lighting that's been happening in my my home studio, which is also my room. If you've been watching previous episodes that I've been posting up since I've been doing video. That being said, the topic we'll be tackling today is how can I maintain a clean and organized home when my kids contribute to the mess? This is a great topic. And as an organizer who deals with a lot of families, it can get overwhelming. Now, if you're a parent, you totally understand this, whether it's our kids and Maybe our spouses, our partners, or maybe it's ourselves that's contributing to the mess. A mess is a mess. But the person who realizes that the place is a mess is usually the person who has less of a tolerance for the chaos and clutter and disorganization. So they tend to be the ones to do all the maintenance, the cleanups, the organizing, reorganizing, and the picking up of everything, right? We realize that the people that we're living with, they too play a big part in the chaos and the disorganization. So normally our automatic pilot will have to clean up after them or we end up losing our and then yelling at the kids or something to pick up everything. Now, we don't really want to get to that point, right? It's not a fun place to be at. And we kind of like don't like being the bad guy all the time or raising our voices and yelling at the kids. It's not fun. So what do we do? How can we maintain the home in a clean enough state and keep it organized if it's the kids constantly contributing to the mess? So number one, we have to kind of like stop and take note. All right. The kids, depending on how old they are, we got to take a look and see where is this all coming from? Is it because they just don't feel like putting things away? Do they not know where things go? Were they ever taught it? And, you know, maybe it's just that there's a lot of things that they get to play with or they have access to that it's just very overwhelming to put something away because something else, another shiny object, is grabbing their interest. So we all know as adults that kids, they jump from one shiny object to the next, to the next, to the next. And if they're not taught how to stop and put things away, then they're just going to continue that habit of just pulling out the next toy and the next toy and the next toy. So myself, we're, we're still dealing with this right now and my kids are 9, 11, and 13. Now, my 13-year-old is not too bad, but, you know, it's still a lot of practice and patience and repetition 
and a little reminder for them to say, don't forget, before you pull out another toy, another game board, or go off and play something else, you need to clean up the mess that you left behind. Now, if your kids are a lot younger, it's going to take some time before they get that. And it's going to take a lot of assistance from you or from your the other kids to just, you know, stop. And we're going to do all of this together. We're going to share the responsibilities in cleaning up together. So if they haven't been taught how to put things away or where things go, that's where you come along and where limiting the access of all the toys and all the books and all the games comes into play. And perhaps putting the things that they love to play with more at eye level and having less access to the things that might not be suitable for them for their age group and putting them a little bit higher or putting them in another storage space if you have room in your house for that. I know it's tricky, but we really have to be creative here and kind of limit how many toys and stuff that they can play with. It doesn't even have to be toys. It could be also their clothing. We probably have to remind them that when you try something on, you got to hang it back or fold it back in your drawers, but don't just automatically leave it on the floor or dump it in the hamper because it's not really dirty. So check out what the source of the problem is. Is it too many toys? Is it a need for a reminder of how to put things away? Is it just maybe they don't have a space where they can really play? right, where they can actually express and and just play in that space. So might it be that you have to establish a play area if you don't have one yet. And and organizing your toy room is key here. At one point, our, our whole house was the play area and it was way too much. It was too overwhelming. So if you can first establish where the play area is and where the toys have to go back and also limit the amount of toys, books, and games that they have access to, that will probably help to cut down on the chaos and the disorganization that the kids make. Next. Now, we talked about the source. The second thing you want to look at is to bring it up with them. Now, I'm talking about school-age kids. I'm not talking about toddlers or anything because forget that. <laughs> like In one ear, out the other, maybe they might understand. Maybe they'll forget the next day. But if you you know, have a conversation with the kids or your kid that they are not alone in the home and that other people will share the space too. Kind of like clues them in to say that, you know, they have to watch how they treat the space. So to say, hey, by the way, we share the space too. So that's not cool. Or this area here is where a lot of us are constantly walking. So it's not really a good idea to lay out all your toys here in this common area where everybody's walking. Someone can get hurt. You can get hurt. I can get hurt. Or, you know, your, the pieces might be kicked around because we're rushing from one space to the other and we don't want to lose any of our toys, right? Or any of our pieces because if we don't have all the pieces, we're going to have to get rid of the toy or the toys because there's missing pieces and parts. And it's no fun when parts are missing, right? We're going to have to get rid of it. So if you put it in a way where it helps them to grow some sort of an awareness of their space, the possibility of losing their items that they share the space to, or someone can get hurt. It might help to get them to think first before they set up shop and start playing at a certain space and making sure that it's in a out of the way place and that it's ideally in a designated play area. Now, the final thing I want to say about this is, I know this is probably a lot of things that I've covered, but maybe the one thing you want to do after the conversation with your kids or your child is to establish one rule that everyone sticks to. And the rule that I'm still working on and I completely love is the, you cannot play with another toy or something else another game or go play your video games without putting away the thing that you just played with, whether it's arts and crafts or reading a book or, you know, drawing. All those things have to be put away before you can move on to the next activity. So if that rule can be established for everyone, and I'm talking about the adults too, we do things in the house too, you know, we're 
on our computers or reading a book or we're working on a project. Maybe if we practice what we're preaching to the kids, that they will follow suit. So I hope this episode was helpful to you or you got some sort of a reminder of like, yeah, I got to tackle this with my kids too. I, I hope it helps and I hope it brings you guys a lot more peace and less chaos in the house. So where do we go from here? Well, if you haven't gotten it yet, you want to download my PDF cheat sheet that is called How to Get the Kids to Tidy Up. Go to the show notes of this episode or head to dianehimenez.com forward slash tidy up. I can't wait for you to get your hands on it and try it out at home. And I'm excited to see where this all takes you. So I leave you now and I wish you and yours a great day. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.